السلام <coughs> عليكم um, today's lecture is on connective tissue diseases um, again very important uh, topic is very important to um, master and uh, um, grasp all the information here um, this topic is very important uh, again there are rates of morbidity and mortality um, this topic um, um, uh, includes uh, disorders of multi-system nature um, wherein multiple vital organs can be involved such as um, um, the kidney as uh, happens in um, uh, lupus nephritis or lungs in interstitial lung diseases uh, related to these connective tissue uh, disorders. To start with, it's very important not to get the um, um, term heritable connective tissue disorders uh, confused with autoimmune connective tissue disorders. Um, a big example for heritable connective tissue disorder is Marfan uh, syndrome. Um, you, you all uh, know about uh, Marfan uh, syndrome. Um, uh, um, uh, very, uh, very, very, very uh, tall uh, height, vascular complications such as aortic um, aneurysms, um, and also uh, next dislocation. Uh, these are main features. Um, whereas um, examples uh, for autoimmune connective tissue disorders are lupus, sy uh, systemic sclerosis, Sjogren's syndrome, mixed connective tissue disorder, overlap syndromes, and also in relation are the inflammatory myopathies so connective tissue diseases are subsets that can be distinguished clinically and serologically um, the findings can evolve over a number of years you can have a patient with uh, lupus so starting with some ray nodes some skin rash arthralgia positive ANA but in another a few weeks or months they might develop the uh, might develop further complications such or features such as lupus nephritis or inter interstitial lung disease so not necessarily that everything will happen in at the same time um, Organ failure can happen. Uh, there is uh, variable mortality rates according to um, uh, the condition and the severity. You will um, notice many interesting clinical um, uh, uh, signs, um, uh, things like skin rashes and um, um, and um, uh, multi and the multi-system nature of these disorders um, makes them very interesting uh, to study and uh, to go through the details of uh, of which. Ray nodes can um, be considered um, as a um, very common association to connective tissue disorders. We all know that ray nodes can be either primary as a standalone condition. Uh, due to vascular spasm of uh, idiopathic nature, um, usually more common amongst the smokers and um, uh, and in people who do not uh, look after themselves in terms of um, keeping warm. Um, however, um, it can be a secondary phenomenon um, uh, occurring alongside the connective tissue disorders. Also, uh, ray nodes can be sometimes so severe that they can cause um, tissue loss, uh, sometimes loss of fingertips, um, um, and therefore very important to deal with, um, uh, with this condition quite seriously. In terms of lupus, um, Note that lupus has a systemic form, which is called systemic lupus erythematosus, or uh, the discoid lupus. Uh, discoid lupus, if it happens on its own, without other systemic features, then it can be considered as a dermatological disorder. If it is occurring in the context of systemic features and the criteria of SLE, then it will be a part of the criteria, then it is a part of the systemic lupus. 
Sometimes um, lupus can present as a subacute cutaneous um, uh, cutaneous form, um, uh, usually on the areas exposed to the sun. There is also a category called the drugs-induced lupus, and there are some uh, drugs uh, that are associated with uh, drugs-induced lupus. We will be going through these examples as well as the um, um, a bit of information that you need to always uh, uh, recall that uh, neonatal lupus uh, can occur in uh, newborns, uh, usually to the mothers uh, known to have uh, lupus. Um, and uh, also there can be passage of uh, certain autoantibodies. Um, um, uh, Patients with uh, lupus and with other conditions called Sjogren's syndrome can have anti rho and anti la antibodies. These can cause heart blocks in the newborns, and hence it's important to uh, get these uh, 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 classified and known in the mothers and to manage that for them. The um, doctors looking after the newborn should be made aware before the delivery so that for example if a pacemaker for the baby is needed then that can be prepared in advance now we will be going through um, uh, the um, um, uh, pathophysiology of uh, SLE um, the mechanism uh, as to how SLE uh, develops is not uh, entirely uh, uh, and exactly known. Uh, most theories uh, are around the um, theme of interaction uh, in between uh, genetic uh, susceptibility with environmental stimuli that result in autoimmune uh, proliferation and therefore autoantibody production causing inflammation. It's however very important uh, to be aware of the uh, systemic nature of SLE and uh, to um, uh, uh, realize the, um, how the organs get affected um, by SLE. So going through the criteria of SLE, um, 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 malar rash, um, what, is, um, what is specific about it is that it is spared the nasolabial folds. We always um, recommend sun blockers for the patients who um, are known to have SLE. Sun is known as a triggering factor for flares of SLE, especially the skin disease. Discoid rash, again, um, I've mentioned about discoid rash earlier. Discoid uh, lesions can be scarring and they can cause um, 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 some uh, long-term marks on the skin. If, if a discoid lesion is occurring on its own, then that is a dermatological problem, purely a dermatological problem. However, it is also a criteria amongst the criteria, the other criteria for SLE. So if, um, if a patient de develops it um, uh, as a part of uh, SLE, then it counts as one of the criteria. Photosensitivity, um, uh, it's very important for these patients to be told about uh, the bad effect of uh, sunlight to them. Sun avoidance is always uh, recommended. Oral and uh, nasal ulcer ulcers um, are also a feature of SLE. They are not necessarily so painful as the ones that are uh, found in Bachet's disease, but they are a common feature. In terms of arthritis, it's usually not erosive.
although arthritis is not usually erosive it is usually of inflammatory type so you will have things like early morning stiffness you will have um, features of synovitis and you will have the type of pain that is worse in the early morning which usually gets better throughout the day as the time goes on uh, as the time goes in in the day um, 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 and also on uh, gentle exercises cirrhositis an additional criteria pleuritis is a, a common finding however um, here it's very important to uh, remember that patients with SLE do have hypercoagulable states therefore um, if a patient develops a pleuritic chest pain it's important to always uh, keep the possibility of um, pulmonary embolism on mind and not always to take it to take it uh, for granted that this is a benign uh, pleurisy. Renal disorder, um, 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 this is very important. It's very important to keep checking the blood pressure of patients with SLE on their follow-ups. We need to screen their uh, urine samples and to look at um, findings of protein, hemoglobin or red cells or casts. These are usually features of uh, an ongoing renal disorder. Sometimes renal disease can be quite silent. So it's very important to catch it and to diagnose it even if the patient is not symptomatic at that stage. Neurological disorders uh, such as uh, seizures or uh, polyneuropathy. Again, we have um, uh, with things like seizures, we, um, this can be due to SLE itself. However, we should also keep in mind that these patients uh, are immunocompromised. They can um, develop, for example, septic processes such as um, uh, septic meningitis. Therefore, it is important in the first instance, in the first instance, to rule out um, infections and other causes for uh, such presentations, uh, such as uremia, electrolyte disturbances, or ketoacidosis. Um, if they were having um, um, clinical um, signs and reasons um, uh, compatible with it. Otherwise, we should um, uh, assess for the possibility of an active lupus or uh, lupus as an underlying cause for these features. Blood disorders can affect any of the um, uh, hematological lines, so uh, hemoly hemolytic anemia, leukopenia, lymphopenia, and also thrombocytopenia. All of these uh, findings can uh, occur. The immunological disorders are um, represented by the abnormality of the um, autoantibodies, so positive anti double stranded DNA or anti SM um, um, or uh, anti phospholipid antibodies. Remember that anti phospholipid syndrome uh, is more common um, among the patients with SLE. However, uh, antiphospholipid syndrome can be a standalone uh, disorder. ANA uh, is considered as a separate criteria, so it is not uh, um, uh, considered here in terms of um, criteria design to be a part of the um, immunological disorder. This one counts separately. So positive ANA is, um, is a separate criteria. Now we have um, um, uh, to have a more close look at the autoantibodies. Um, because ANA is um, positive in about 
in almost all patients so um, uh, it is considered a best screening test if a patient is um, is ANA negative um, this makes the diagnosis very much doubted however it doesn't entirely rule it out in terms of anti double stranded DNA these are um, specific for SLE itself and they tend to correlate with disease activity also anti SM are specific for SLE The fourth one you would see on the page is anti-RNP is positive in around 40% of patients with a disorder called mixed connective tissue disorder. However, it can also be present in other uh, connective tissue diseases. Regardless of what disorder um, it's associated with, whenever RMP is positive, we always need to look for involvement of the heart by inflammatory processes. So things like inflammatory myocarditis can be more common in patients with anti-RMP and then we need to screen these patients uh, for any features of um, cardiological disorders. anti rho anti la we've mentioned about these uh, earlier and we've mentioned about the congenital heart block syndrome. anti rho anti la are also uh, present in, um, uh, in Sjogren's syndrome, which is another example of connective tissue disease. I'm sure that you, um, uh, you all heard uh, on the news about the drug hydroxychloroquine. This is the antimalarial, which is now um, uh, being uh, considered for its potential um, beneficial effect uh, against uh, coronavirus. So this is originally an antimalarial uh, drug. It's useful in the treatment of the uh, cutaneous uh, features of SLE. And also review your pharmacology for the disease uh, modifying antiromatic drugs such as methotrexate. There are different indications for these medications. Try to refresh your uh, to refresh your memory on um, some of the uh, specific um, uh, findings. Uh, sorry for the specific side effects of uh, each of these medications. For example, you might remember that um, cyclosporine is a medication that can cause uh, gum hypertrophy and hypertension. Azithioprin can cause um, low-grade lymphomas on the long-term use. Methotrexate can cause um, acute pneumonitis. Cyclophosphamide, for example, is um, um, accused of causing uh, bladder cancers on the long term and also uh, hemorrhagic cystitis. So please refresh your memory uh, on your pharmacology. In terms of biologics, um, there is an uh, increasing role for rituximab and other biologics. And as you know, in terms of steroids, we tend to use them for flare-ups and at um, the induction stages when these conditions are presenting initially in, an, a, very, in a very active uh, fashion. So steroids are of a quick onset of action and therefore they are needed.
uh, now mentioning about some of the uh, bad prognosis um, factors um, so um, renal disease hypertension um, male gender and younger ages So in terms of the age, um, you can look at this as, and you can think about it, that if a young person is um, has got um, um, SLE, they are going to live with it throughout their life. So longer period of exposure to an inflammatory process. On the other hand, older age uh, at the presentation, um, so um, uh, SLE would tend to be uh, of um, high severity um, um, in the older people, also the black race and uh, um, presence of additional problems and comorbidities including antiphospholipid antibodies. In terms of drug-induced lupus, So we need to remember that some drugs can cause um, some lupusy um, uh, um, features. Drug-induced lupus tends not to be uh, very severe and tends to avoid uh, vital organs. So this is a list uh, for the most common medications that can cause drug-induced lupus. Remember these on taking your medical histories. And here some comparison for you in between SLE and drug-induced in between SLE and drug-induced lupus. See how uh, renal involvement is rare, renal involvement is rare. And look at the autoantibodies profile. Please note the association of uh, antihistone and anti double stranded DNA. They are, these are helpful in um, in making a diagnosis and distinguishing in between them. So anti-double-stranded DNA is usually negative in drug-induced lupus. In fact, an exception for this is um, when um, lupus is caused by the biologic medications where anti-double-stranded DNA can still be positive. In terms of the antihistone antibodies, although they are positive in 95% um, of the drug-induced lupus, they can also be positive in SLE itself. Therefore, I would be looking at the negative predictive value for antihistones. In other words, if antihistone is negative, it makes drug-induced lupus less likely. This is to remind you about the uh, neonatal uh, heart block syndrome in association with anti-LA, anti-RO antibodies. Now a quick review on the antiphospholipid syndrome, which you should also be um, um, uh, studying as a part of your uh, hematological uh, studies. This is a syndrome that can be responsible for recurrent venous or arterial thrombosis, and sometimes unprovoked thrombosis. Also, it can be a cause of fetal losses and pregnancy problems. Antiphospholipid um, syndrome is associated with um, um, 
positivity of a certain uh, autoantibodies and this is for your further study to um, uh, read about the anticardiolipin uh, IgM IgG antibodies antiphospholipids um, and the lupus anticoagulant So Raynaud's doesn't have an L in it, so sorry for this uh, uh, typing error. We've seen this, we've talked about this. Now, uh, Sjogren syndrome is another uh, example of a connective tissue disorder. Uh, Sika syndrome, dryness of uh, the mucous membranes, especially at, at the level of the eyes and the mouth is a very prominent feature. Remember that uh, mouth dryness can result in secondary problems as well. For example, um, difficulty swallowing. This is a point for you to consider on taking uh, histories. Try to distinguish between a true dysphagia and um, and a difficulty swallowing that is due to secondary causes such as dryness of the mouth. It's very common for patients with Sjogren's to um, have uh, muscle aches, things like myalgia in addition to arthralgia, joint pains. And some of them also develop uh, neuropathy and um, less common than in SLE, they can develop renal problems as well. Sjogren's is uh, famous for its association with other autoimmune conditions such as with rheumatoid arthritis and with SLE. Also, it can be uh, associated with primary biliary cirrhosis and liver disease. One more fact about Sjogren's syndrome is that um, patients with this syndrome uh, are um, more liable to develop um, uh, malignancy over time. This is not very common, but it is more common for patients with Sjogren's to develop malignancies. And therefore, we should always keep this on our mind when we follow up these patients. Now, going to, a th to an additional uh, big example on uh, connective tissue disorders, which is uh, systemic sclerosis. Have some time to look at this page. And as this picture. Note the extent of uh, telangiectasia on the hands and on the face. Look at that face and see the um, appearance of the nose and the mouth. Very tight skin. The nose is taking the appearance of a punched uh, no a nose. Sometimes there can be peaking of the nose. And if you are to feel these hands, they are going to be very um, tight. The skin will be very tight. The uh, fingers will be contracted due to um, the uh, tight skin and the subcutaneous uh, tissues. And look at the ulcer formation. Crest syndrome is a variant of uh, scleroderma. Uh, C 
CREST, calcinosis Raynaud's, esophageal dysfunction, usually with acid reflux, sclerodactyly, and telangiectasia. Patients with scleroderma can develop a scleroderma crisis, usually with renal impairment, high blood pressure. Remember that ACE inhibitors and angiotensin converting enzymes inhibitors are the first line of treatment. Remember that generally in internal medicine, um, you would have been taught that um, ACE inhibitors are to be uh, withheld during uh, acute renal impairment. However, this is a big exception. So in scleroderma crisis, the first line uh, treatment will still be ACE inhibitors. Another point for further uh, reading and um, uh, study is to make sure that you are aware of the general principles on how to deal with SLE flare-ups. And remember that patients can have a mixed connective tissue disorder, usually uh, involving features of um, SLE, polymyositis, and scleroderma. If a patient does have a full criteria for one connective tissue disease in addition to a full criteria of another connective tissue disease, then they will be termed to have an overlap syndrome. This is going to be different to mixed connective tissue diseases. So uh, overlap syndrome, an example is when you have a patient with well-established traumatoid and then they develop a well-established SLE, then that is going to be overlap of SLE and rheumatoid. Whereas if a patient does have a little bit of features of RA and some features of SLE, and especially if they have the anti-RNP antibody, then they will be called to be having MCTD, that is the mixed connective tissue disorder. Inflammatory myositis and dermatomyositis. These are again uh, topics associated with morbidities and mortalities. Occasionally they can be um, paraneoplastic occurrences. And therefore it's very important to screen for underlying malignancies. So this page uh, takes you through some of the um, related conditions. In terms of PMR, as you know, uh, polymyalgia rheumatica is usually a benign disorder characterized by um, muscle uh, stiffness and myalgia with some elevation in inflammatory markers such as uh, CRP and ESR. It doesn't cause muscle weakness, it causes only aches and pains and stiffness. Also in PMR, we should uh, keep the possibility of underlying malignancies uh, on mind. So when you take clinical history and perform your physical examination, do always uh, ask about things like weight loss, loss of appetite, lumps and bumps, and on physical examination, do look for organomegalies, lymphadenopathies, or any unexplained uh, neuropathy. Look at the blood tests and make sure that these patients are not having some hints towards malignancies such as hypercalcemia, unexplained anemia, or hyponatremia.
polymyositis is the involvement of muscles with uh, inflammation uh, without the presence of skin manifestations. Patients with uh, myopathies would usually complain about things like uh, rising from chairs, climbing steps, combing hair, and these are usually due to weakness in the proximal groups of muscles. They can also have dysphagia and failure of the respiratory muscles and so a risk of respiratory failure. The physical examination would be focused at demonstrating the uh, presence and extent of muscle weakness and also to uh, exclude any presence of a neurological disorders or findings. However, the muscles can be tender on palpation. The investigations, uh, the blood test would usually show very raised uh, uh, CK levels. ANA and ENA actually should be uh, performed in addition to a panel of uh, muscles associated antibodies. The other blood tests aim at uh, ruling out um, presence of um, entities that can mimic or cause myopathy such as uh, thyroid diseases, Cushing's, significant vitamin D deficiency, and viremia. EMG is usually confirmatory, and muscle biopsy is the definitive test. In a practice, muscle biopsy is taken after performing an MRI scan, which can confirm the presence of involved muscles with uh, edema and inflammation and then it gives us the best uh, anatomical size, site to, um, as to where to perform the um, muscle biopsy. Dermatomyositis is um, most of the findings in myositis are also present in dermatomyositis but in addition to that, there will be skin involvement. And the skin rash is usually taking the color of uh, these flowers as you see here. Always remember that these are still um, conditions that despite their names as dermatomyositis or myositis, they can involve uh, deeper uh, organs such as the lungs, heart, and therefore they are still systemic disorders. Review these findings and conclude with remembering the um, 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 the fact that um, sometimes dermatomyositis can occur without a myositis at the point, and it can be only an inflammatory dermatitis, which can then continue to be purely as an inflammatory dermatitis, or uh, myositis can be added later in time. This is a characteristic periorbital uh, rash associated uh, with dermatomyositis. I would advise that you we always ask um, and inquire about uh, the use of any cosmetic uh, products because this can hide these signs so just to make sure
these are some additional features and this is a reminder to a screen also for malignancy there is no standardized way as to how to screen for malignancy but as you develop your uh, clinical knowledge and experience you are then to uh, acquire your um, way and clinical sense with this regard these are the findings of skin and muscle biopsies again remember your pharmacotherapy agents Remember, there can always be residual weakness and disability, and um, here there will be a um, significant role for physiotherapy and rehabilitation. Again, these are some um, Gotrin's uh, papules with um, some telangiectasia and compare between the hands of someone with uh, dermatomyositis on the right hand side where you would see the um, skin lesions involving the bony prominences and the uh, DIP, PIP, MCP joints whereas on the left hand side the lupus and photosensitive rashes are sparing those areas so at an initial look you might think that these are similar but they are very different again this is the v-shaped uh, rash commonly seen in dermatomyositis now you need to know that there is a specific syndrome in relation uh, which is uh, called the anti jo uh, one syndrome or um, um, uh, anti-amino acyl tRNA synthetase antibody syndrome. Uh, the main features are arthritis, myositis, fevers, interstitial lung disease, and mechanic hands. Mechanic mechanic hands are uh, like the ones you see in this picture. And there are also some additional syndromes. So the one on the top is the same one as of anti jo one antibodies uh, syndrome. Whereas if there is a positivity of anti uh, SRP or the signal recognition particle, this would usually denote involvement of the heart, which is in a way a bad prognostic uh, point. Make sure that you remember the features of anti one uh, and uh, syndrome. And remember that myopathies can occur as an overlapping uh, uh, problem to other uh, connective tissue diseases. And a quick mention on the inclusion body myositis, which is more common in elderly, more common in males. And... Um, so far there isn't a very effective uh, treatment however there is um, a lot of ongoing research some medications as like what we uh, uh, have seen with lupus there is a drug induced lupus there are medications that can cause lupus and also there are drugs that can cause uh, myopathies Again, very important to review your pharmacology. So colchicine is a medication used uh, in gout. It's also used in uh, Mediterranean familial fe fevers. And there are also some other indications in certain types of pericarditis. Hydroxychloroquine is now becoming the famous uh, drug especially in the, this period of the uh, coronavirus. You all know about the steroids uh, side effects and how long-term use of steroids 
can cause problems like osteoporosis, thinning of the uh, skin and hair and acne, and also it can cause um, steroids induced uh, myopathy. Also effects of alcohol and cocaine. Keep these differentials on your mind. And always um, in a practice, we should remember not to prescribe muscle relaxants to patients with uh, myopathies. Uh, that is all. I hope that you all enjoyed this. Um, please remember all the information. Please remember that you can ask, inquire, and read more about any point that you haven't fully understood. Um, I hope that studying from home um, is going well for you all. And um, um, I think this is a very good um, uh, opportunity to uh, concentrate very well and probably uh, save some time through transportation and uh, socializing. So we expect you to be very good at uh, these topics uh, in particular. Any questions, please uh, let me know. Thank you very much and uh, very good luck to all of you. Assalamu alaikum.